So in today's video, we are literally t picking up where we were in the last video, finishing off coding our play button. But the reason that this task is in today's video is because we're going to have to learn and understand something called a cutscene and how that works inside the composer environment along with all the other file management tasks we need to do because otherwise your game is going to end up with a major bug. So my name is Angela McCall, this is Point and Click Puzzle Games, a small YouTube channel dedicated to helping people learn how to program using the Lua programming language, using all open source free tools and resources. And if you haven't been here before, please do support my channel, subscribe, stay notified because I am publishing videos three times a week now in 2021. And do put your comments below because I will answer any questions. Now I'm going to give you a heads up, today's video is going to be a little bit technical and it's it's going to be a bit of a challenge to understand why I'm teaching what I'm teaching but if you don't get it I want you to trust me because this is one of those things that if you don't get now you will get when the problem arises. What am I talking about? Well let's just first of all recap and kind of demonstrate what we need to do okay so I'm going to dive on over to my left hand side monitor screen whereby you can see I've got my original noughts and crosses app that I've published available on screen as I've been testing you can see all the player scores are going up. We've not programmed that yet but we will do in future videos real soon but let's just quickly get through to our game overlay so I make a winning game a little chime sounds which will be on the next video and then you've got this play button and the review button now in our very last video up here I will put a link to it but we had finished programming this review button so if I click on this preview button or review button whatever you want to call it okay you can see the underlying game that has just been finished and that the red noughts were the winner in this particular case and if I release the button everything works so we had finished that task in the video in the last video which I'll put a link to somewhere up here okay but we had got about 95% the way through of programming our play button and the reason that I stopped the video there and then and not finish that task is because we now need to call the next scene to load now game logic would say that we need to reload the GP1 file and have a fresh game of tic-tac-toe, which is exactly what we want to have happen from the user experience. The problem is that the game, the app itself, has to do some file management in order for that to happen. And that stuff is all invisible. It's a bit hard to understand when you're fresh to this whole scene management process. So I am gonna be looking at the Corona docs uh, quite a bit in this tutorial. I'm gonna be looking at the Composer library and we're going to be using their template so that we can understand the flow of the game logic and how it is brought into memory, executed and things are displayed on the screen. But essentially, if I can duplicate the error, I'm going to show you the challenge that you are going to have. And it's not something you're going to necessarily see first off. So when you're building the game and you want to call the GP1 file, okay, you might find that the first time you play the game it's fine, you program the play button, it loads the GP1 file again, we play a second game of tic-tac-toe, but my task for you is I want you to keep playing, reading what's going on in the console, looking at how the files are loading and each of those different scene sections, so scene create, scene show, scene wheel, scene hide, sh will, hide, did, and all that kind of stuff, and then destroy, because at some point, your game logic will look like you're testing it and everything is working fine, and then you actually get into playing your game, and out of nowhere, it will feel like there is a bug, a problem, an error, something's not going on, and everything kind of crashes in your app, and you'll sit there for hours trying to work out what's going on, when it was obviously all the way through you've been testing, and it seems to have worked fine, and that is because the files in the background are not clearing away previous instances of themselves when they were played before. So I'm going to try my hardest right now to demonstrate that. So let's go back over onto my left hand side screen. Let's show you what it should look like when everything works fine. So this is my noughts and crosses app that I have published. As I click the play button, I'm holding my mouse cursor down. Okay. Now when I release it, you're going to see the screen go blank, very 
for just like a millisecond or so. And then about one second later, a fresh version of the GP1 scene is gonna display. There's it blank and there it's showing, okay? Now, what you haven't seen is that in milliseconds, I have literally displayed a cut scene, hidden the cut scene, destroyed the cut scene, and then shown the GP1 file, all in milliseconds. And now the majority of this video is gonna explain why I've done that in that way, okay? So first of all, let's go on dive over to our documentation so you can see where I'm talking about and follow this kind of from the, the powers that be that actually teach this stuff proper than, than myself. Okay, so I'm in the composer library, I'm in the developer guides and I'm in the user interface stroke scenes section. Okay, so we're in the composer library and if we scroll on down, we're gonna to get to the bit where it says scene flow and events, okay? Now, I just wanna try and explain something here for you. So let's look at this all the way through. Think of the brains of the game. It knows nothing about this game or the scene file, gp1.lua, okay? So the first thing that's gonna happen is the composer is gonna basically call the scene into its memory, okay? And then the first thing that's gonna happen in this gray section, all before anything is shown to the player, is that it's gonna create all of the objects, and then inside the scene, it's gonna prepare it, so it's gonna be ready to, it will show on screen. Then as it starts to show, we're gonna move into the orange section here, and then it's gonna finish off any tasks that did show on screen. So before the player is now touched anything, we know that the game has loaded to a scene show did event. All right, so that's gp1.lua scene show did event. All right, then your gameplay is gonna take place. And when that gameplay has come to an end, all right, in our gp1 file, we would then call the new scene, the overlay to show. So basically this whole entire sort of structure gets loaded into the memory for a second time but this time the file name has changed so it's not gp1 we're now looking at the overlay so again the overlay has got to be created any of its objects will show on screen did show on screen that kind of thing and then we're going to hit that big old play button so we've reviewed button and we've hidden and shown the overlay and it's all good we finished using it we want to now play another game of tic-tac-toe and we're going to hit that play button if we now call GP1 again, so there's like the third scene that we load, this is where the problem will arise because the first instance of GP1 will still need to execute the hide will, hide did and destroy events. But it won't know which version, which instance of GP1 it's using because GP1 the second instance is now being loaded and so it's going through its show will show did and all that so the file names are identical and the composer the brain of the game is sitting there thinking well I've got to close and delete and destroy and hide this but it's also showing I've got to show and display it and it can't differentiate between the two different instances of the same file being used in memory okay I know this is complex please just try your hardest to stick with me so what we need to do is we need to give the game the opportunity to completely and utterly do its file management behind the scenes which is why we use something called a cutscene now if I go back to my left monitor and I come out of this let's go back to the actual uh, composer library there is a whole section on the cut scenes now reloading scenes it goes on to give you some examples on how you can do this my personal experience is that the easiest and neatest way for your game logic and program to execute and do its housekeeping is to basically use the cutscene. I don't like this version um, in this particular instance of how we're managing the game. So I would say don't do this, not ever in a day, but in this particular app that we're building, what we actually need to do is use a cutscene. So here's the cutscene. So the best practice for reloading scenes is to use an intermediate scene, which is what the cutscene is. In games, this is often referred to as a cutscene and may use show the user a summary of their performance. A menu or options like replay, exit, etc. Now I'm going to show you an example of that in a minute. Using an intermediately cutscene, you can manually remove the scene that you want to reload resulting in a fresh start when you reload it again. However, you may need to reset variables and reposition any objects in the will phase of the game. Now, we're not gonna necessarily need to do that because we are literally gonna 
play a fresh game of tic-tac-toe. So I don't know if you can see here, but I've got a games folder on my phone. Okay, and one of the games is called Toon Blast. Okay, now it's really quite a popular game. Um, there we go, it's going to just load, and you can see that I've been playing it for years. I don't know if you can see very well, but it's on. I'm on level 2567. I've probably been playing this for about three years. As I click on this blue button, this blue here, the object next to it is going to finish, and then it's going to say Toon Blast. So there's a little overlay, and it gives me all the little objects fly around the screen, and then it's going to collect my points. And there you go, it's saying level completed, okay? And it is now showing me an overlay. Now, as a player, the next thing I wanna do is hit that continue button, and play a new game. Okay, so there's a little splash screen, and there you go, it's loading. Okay, so now let's put all of this theory into practice. So first of all, all I've done at the moment is navigated to my GP1 file. I've turned off all the print commands except those that tell me where I am in the file. So for example, the GP1 file has started to load. And then as we come down here, we execute the create section of the scene, hide, did hide, did show, etc. Now I've duplicated that and I've done the same thing inside the um, overlay. So there you can see the line of print that says overlay winning game is in the create section. And then you've got the show will, show did. Um, and as we go down, the only other two lines of code I've left in here is the touch events that tell us which of the two buttons on the overlay screen are being used, just so that you can see the logic of the game. And again, we've got the, the name of the file and hide will, hide did, etc. The only other thing I've done just to speed up a little bit of time is I've gone through to and created a cutscene. So before I show you that, literally, if you remember, we've got our scene template file. All I've done is copy the code and I've literally just named it cutscene hyphen gameplay dot Lua. And then again, I've changed the play, the file name here. So again, when this scene is being called, we can see that it started. It's in the create section, show real, show did, etc., etc. Although we're not gonna use that right this precise second. All I wanted to do was point out that I've literally updated the prints lines of command whilst we were talking about it. So let's go back to GP1. Over here on the console, you can see that the last four things that it's done, let me highlight them, is that the GP1 file was started, then all of the objects that we have to create were created, then they were prepared to go, will go on screen, then show did on screen, okay? So I've named where we are in the file. So if we come to GP1 here and we go up to the show did, that's where we we know that line of code has executed. And so basically everything inside that particular else if phase did then, we're up to the word end on line 408. So everything that we've done now up to line 408 has done its job. Okay, so it's either been executed already or it's a function that's now stored in memory, ready for something to happen in the app and then that code get called, okay? So we know where we are in the GP1 file and the game as it exists right now. None of this has been called. The game or the brain of the, the, the app does not know the hide event exists at this moment in time. So let's just quickly play a game of tic-tac-toe. Okay, now you can see over here on the left hand side that the overlay scene has started, it's created any objects, it's prepared to show or will show on screen and then it did show on screen, okay? Now just to prove those buttons, so we're over here at the moment and we're in this section up here, so the uh, show did, that print line on 84 has now executed and then if I touch the, let's do the review button first of all, so if I click on the review button and then show you, obviously as a user experience, we see the game change as I've picked, clicked it a few times. You can see here that that code, the touch event began on button review. So it's now the touch event began on button review and then the touch event ended on button review. So you can see it's coming in a couple of times there as I keep clicking it, it's executing some lines of code. Okay, so um, for the moment, we've already done how to load different scenes and things like that. But just so that you know where we're at, um, at the end of the last video, I said to you we had one more line of statement to do and that was basically tell the game inside the play button. So we're in here on button play touch. So this is the commands. It began, it set the focus, it's descaled the button down. So it's at about 95% its original size. When it's finished doing its thing, we've scaled it back up to 100%. Then we've unset the focus and then now the last thing we need to do is tell it to basically load the new gameplay. Now this is what happens without 
the cutscene existing. So the crossfade is the effect that we want so that it sort of fades one scene out and fades the next scene in over one second. And that's the file name without the dot lua extension showing, okay? So as I hit save now, okay, the game's loading. Let me just quickly go through and we're gonna talk through what happens on the console over here. Now, there you go, we've, we've started the first game. There we go, finished it, we're gonna click play. Okay, and obviously we haven't finished programming it because we haven't actually put any commands in to destroy the previous version. And this is where we have to work out our file management. If we come over here, you can see that the touch event on the play button started and then the touch event on the button ended, so it's working, at which point it didn't then go and deal with the GP1 scene. What it finished off doing was handling the overlay scene. So the last three sections of the scene here where it says hide over here we've got the hide wheel hide did and then destroy okay so we haven't actually got any commands there's no code there all we are telling at the moment to the console over here is that these three scene events did execute when they were finished executing instantly it's like this file was closed and it's come back to the GP1 file and then it has dealt with the GP1 hide wheel, hide did. But here is an example of exactly why this cutscene needs to ex exist. Okay, if you look, all right, we've got GP1 show wheel and GP1 show did. Okay, so now you're gonna think to yourself, well, where's the GP1 started and the GP1 create? What has happened is it doesn't need to create those because that information is already stored in memory. So its only focus is to refresh the show section of the scene. So if we come back over to our um, little diagram that these guys at Corona or Solar2D Labs have created for us, all that's happened is that when the new, the overlay finished doing its thing, it basically meant that here, when that destroy command had finished, the game literally went back to the GP1 scene and finished off where it was at. So it's gone to hide wheel and then hide did, which is great. So let's just highlight those two. So this section here then executed on the first instance of the GP1 file being called. Okay, so let's come back out. So if you look, we're at this section down here whereby the, sh the scene is active. Okay, and then it's gone and the scene hid will, scene hid did. So this bit where this black line now looping is what's going on, okay? So we come out, we black line, follow all the way through and the game's gone straight back into this section here which is actually the show will. So let's go back to our game. So that's, you can see here now, the show will has executed which means anything that we have put as code outside of the scene events or outside of the create, this scene here, okay, is still in memory, so we haven't had to create them a second time. We've just kind of got to refresh the screen, although we haven't told it how to yet. But essentially, the, the game is now reloading all of this section here. So, before we get down to, and it's show did, so let's just highlight this, okay? So all of this bit here has just replayed out now for the second time. So what we're gonna do is, if we come back down to the bottom of the GP1 file, Okay, we have got the hide section and the destroy section. Now what we need to do is we need to remove the scene, but there are two ways. We can either destroy the scene entirely or we can recycle the scene, which is more what's going on at the moment and we just need to tidy up. So let's come out of here and go back into um, our scene and we want to actually destroy. So if I was to type in remove scene, let's just bring up the documentation so you guys can follow my logic. Okay, here's the composer remove scene, all right, and that's the actual syntax. And we only need to give it the scene name unless we actually want to recycle it. And there is a difference. The recycling basically will be after the scene name, we put a comma and it's either going to be the word true or the word false as it exa the example down there shows you. Okay, but essentially this function removes the specified scene or in brackets optionally recycles it and a destroy event is first dispatched. So basically it's gonna try and destroy it unless we tell it to recycle. If we remove from memory, 
all of the display objects, then we're not going to have any buttons and we're not going to have any board and we're not going to have any lines that are showing winning strikes and things like that because that's all part of our game. So for us, we've got this kind of problem where we kind of need to completely and utterly destroy the game but we actually need to use it again in just a second's time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this composer, remove scene, and we're actually gonna do a destroy event here, okay? So this example here is what we're working with, and all we're gonna do is change the name. So I'm gonna come out of there, I'm gonna go back over to our GP1 file, but I'm not actually gonna put this command in the destroy section because it needs to be called. And as you can see up here, when you're looking in the console, we never actually got to call the destroy. So if I put the code there, it's never gonna happen. So it has to live up here inside the hide did. So as the command to hide the scene is executed, which we know does definitely happen because we can see it there in the console, we need to say to the composer, remove the scene one, well, it's actually called GP1, so let's just change the name, there we go. So now this scene knows to actually completely and utterly destroy all existences of itself in the game's brain or the game's memory, so that in just a few milliseconds from now, when we wanna create a fresh board, we're gonna do so like we've never played the game before in our lives, okay? So that's what we why we've gonna do a complete destroy, so I'm just gonna put a little comment there. Um, complete destroy of this instance of the scene okay save right but we still need to manage the um, overlay scene as well we also need to handle what happens as you can see just before it because we definitely know that the overlay is fully destroyed and that is definitely getting called um, as well. So we also need to handle the overlay, which is pretty much the same thing, but as we aren't really using the overlay that much, we're gonna do a complete destroy. So again, if we come back over to our code, this time we're gonna do a complete destroy, copy. And we're gonna, again, we do know that the hide did ex executed and we did know the destroy executed, but I think for the moment, I am just gonna keep things simple for you guys as best I can. And we're gonna put that code in the did hide section where we, there you go, hide, did. All right, so we're kind of handling that one. So let's get rid of that one for a moment. We don't, we'll need the cut scene in a second, but I'm just gonna show you where we're at to now. So let's do a complete clean reset. And this is why we need to have a cut through scene because of course we destroyed a lot of the display objects and a lot of the display objects included code that was kind of set in our game and now it's trying to access the game has tried to um, load the new version but code is missing so it's all kind of got itself a wee bit muddled so it's not because you've done something wrong it's because we haven't done the final step of the file management of the app, if that makes sense. So the code itself is right, it's our handling of the files and how they are closed down and destroyed that is causing the problem. So to fix this, what we actually need to do is we need to use something called a cut through scene and that's what we was displaying and discussing earlier on. So instead of getting our overlay scene to call this GP1 file down here, okay? So inside our play button, there's our touch event inside our play button. We're going to change the file that we're going to call. We're going to call the cut, cut scene and game play. Cause you might need two or three of these in your game build process. So you might just want to make sure you know which cut scene it is. So I'm just going to hit save there now. And if we look at the cut scene, again, there's no code in here whatsoever, but we are going to need to then play, uh, call the GP1 scene to be reloaded so that you can see the process in the console. So up here in the show, we're gonna wait for the whole thing to display properly. And as soon as it has actually displayed in full, we're gonna call the GP1 file. And as we do that, we need to just destroy this as well down here. So I am going to, and we definitely know that this is gonna be called because we've done an example before. So we could just actually pop it in here and we're gonna do a proper composer, destroy this cutscene. Destroy cut scene and I'm using the wrong comment markers for the wrong programming language there we go right save okay and I've just got to change the cut scene name because I've obviously called it something different here so so cut scene 
and then it's game play right save okay so we've now made sure that we are calling the gp1 and the gameplay scene is being removed as well now if you i don't know if you remembered a second ago but there was lots of messages on top of each other that is because we hadn't tidied up or set the message variable back to nil so i'm just going to do that as well here now so that we can uh see that the messages aren't sitting on top of each other and we actually have to do some memory management at another later stage in the game as um series as well videos as well so we'll tackle that in a future video but i'm just, just gonna go through and create so you can see over here we've got to the show did section all right where the game's loaded we're going to hit there now you can see that the overlay so so far so good all right i won't use the review button just to keep things simple i'm going to click the play button it executes and there is no error okay so let's look over here so the touch button began on the play button then it ended then the overlay itself finished doing its thing, so hide wheel, hide did, destroy. Then the new instance, the, the original game, hide wheel, executed. Then the cutscene came in, created and showed, whilst the original GP1 file then hid and destroyed itself entirely. Then that meant the cutscene could then finish showing, which then tells it to also hide, okay? By which time, inside that show did, we've got a function of the composer go to scene command that tells the which file to open up, which happens to be GP1 again. So this is now the second instance that's loading. As that loads, everything fresh for the very first time into memory, the cutscene finally gets rid of itself and then we get back to GP1 show did. And there we are it's exactly at the same point as we did up here now. Okay, nothing has existed in memory. The game is being accessed for the very first time. Nothing at all exists in the game's memory. All we've got is show did. And now the only thing we've got to handle is this message because we're not destroying objects properly. I thought that was going to solve the problem, but it didn't. So we obviously have some other things that we need to destroy. But you can see here it's trying to say like player, whatever it was, starts and um, I can't think what that is. It says winner as well. So the winner object hasn't been displayed, uh, dis destroyed. So let's just see if we can actually tidy up our code one more time and fix that. Okay, so all I've just done is literally add this one line of text in the hide event to say turn the text invisible because we're no longer using it because i think that object was getting stuck on screen and then we can actually destroy it and that's fine but the actual displayed version was being set to invisible so now the winning line statement no longer shows and we've gone back to player one and everything has reset so that's where i'm going to leave it right now for today um i think you guys have got enough my challenge to you is to see if you can keep playing say 10 12 games of tic-tac-toe and test your app don't just do it two or three times and think it's fine because as you test you go quite quickly because you get used to doing the same actions over and over and your app has to keep pace with you as a player and i want you to test thoroughly that every time you play a new instance is definitely loading nothing's conflicting nothing's getting confused and everything is executing in the right order and if you can get to about 12 to 15 gameplays back to back back to back back to back and you haven't had a problem then your game's fine okay if not then you might need to have a look at the code that's being executed and see if you can slow things down a little bit to maybe give other things a bit time so instead of maybe loading a scene over a second maybe you want to do it over a second and a half so that the file management stuff takes place still in the background and is still having time to do its thing before you've jumped into the next scene being displayed on the screen so that's it from me today i hope you really enjoyed this please do subscribe click that bell to stay notified put your comments below i hope the theory hasn't bored you i hope you haven't had too many challenges keeping the logic it's quite a hard technical thing to have explained and uh, that's it from me today in the next video we will start looking at sound sound channels there are different channels and uh, we are looking at sound effects as well so in this game we don't really have a background music we just have sound effects like the winning da -da -da -ding, and uh, when you tap buttons and things like that so we are just looking at some sound effects in our next video